Saturday's game was special, and just to get this far in the tournament is, is absolutely a treat. But more importantly for me, I came to San Diego in 1980 to coach basketball right here at San Diego State. And every team that's played since that time and beyond has always dreamed of getting to this level. And to see it happen in such dramatic form, it was fantastic. I think everybody has long believed, why not San Diego State? Because San Diego State has had a tradition of winning especially during the Steve Fisher era, and now Brian Dutch has taken the handoff and ran with it. He's done an awesome job. But even back when we were coaching here, before there was a VA House Arena, we played our games in Peterson Gym at the Sports Arena. We had an office that was in a trailer, but we believed that we could win back then as well. And I think right now, San Diego State's positioned itself to do exactly that. Things are so different now. You've got the transfer portal. you got the NIL agreements that are out there right now. You can build a program here, and it's been demonstrated this year that all the number one seeds are gone, and look who's playing for the national championship. Yes, there have been some rule changes, and a lot of the rule changes, the transfer portal, where right now, well, on top of the fact that COVID extended the careers of many players, the transfer portal allows players to leave one college and go to the next and they could have the fifth year of eligibility, maybe play three or four years at one school and come to another. And we're seeing lineups with having some players that had that maturity and that experience to get it done. Alabama, for example, was stacked with great players, but they were all freshmen. You know, they were underclassmen. San Diego State's coming in with seniors and people that have been in a program and believe in the program and have bought into exactly what Brian Dutcher and his staff have prescribed for them to be successful. It is, and not only that, but it's the camaraderie of the group that you have coming together. These players on this team, you can sense that they genuinely like one another, they're cheering for one another, and every night it's a different player stepping up doing great things. Matt Bradley, who scored two points against Creighton, he comes back with 21 against Florida Atlantic. But I truly believe that, you know, there's, there's several elements that you need to have. First off, as a team collectively, you have to run the court, you have to guard somebody, and you have to make your layups better than the opponent. But more importantly, you've got to have five people, at least five, they're going to do the following things. One is Secretary of Defense, and we saw that great defense that we played against Florida Atlantic, where they held this seven-foot center to five points. They can do the same tonight. They did the same against Creighton as well. You have to have a chairman of the boards, the chairman, somebody that's going to get those rebounds. There's going to be a lot of missed shots tonight. We want to rule the boards, clean the glass, and get those passes off the glass offensively, put them back up for layups. You need an executor, and that was Bradley the other night. He executed, went from two points the game before to 21. We just think if we have two or three players at that level, what it's going to do to the opponent tonight. And then you need a minister of motivation, and that's a rook, number 33. I love him. He's in my men's prayer group. He pray, we prayed over him two years ago when he didn't know if he was going to play again because he had a shoulder surgery, a knee surgery, and a hip surgery. And for him to be out there playing and diving on loose balls and playing with such tenacity, it's absolutely huge. But you also need a leader of the pack. And that's not necessarily your coach. You need to have a leader on the court. And we saw that with Lamont Butler the other night when he took that ball the length of the court, no timeout called, got to his spot, pulled up and shot the sweetest jumper that San Diego State basketball history will ever see to win it and put us in this championship game tonight. We've seen that over the years, you know, where there's been buzzer beaters like this. And, you know, it's that time to remember that one special moment. They talk about it year in and year out. But to think that San Diego State is here doing it for the big game and it's going to happen tonight and we will win for a number of reasons. I truly believe we're going to win. A lot of people wonder about well, what happens when you get down. I long believe that a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback. You know, so if there's enough time left in the game, you can always come back to that final shot and help make that happen. But great teams win close games, and that's what San Diego State has demonstrated throughout this entire 2023 NCAA tournament. We've had the setbacks. I mean, look at against Florida Atlantic, we were down by 14. But there was no quit in this team. They kept coming back. The same against Creighton. It was a battle back and forth. But I think the key thing right now with this team is they believe that they can win. And I, I've got my, my, one of my favorite groups. I'm from Detroit, and so Motown's big with me. But I also love rock, and I love the Foo Fighters. And they have a song called Congregation. And in that song, it talks about do you have blind faith or false hope, you see. And right now, everybody talks about we believe that we can win. And I ask people, do you really believe that we can win? 
or do you hope that we can win? If Lamont Butler came down the court hoping he could make that shot, guess what? It's not going in. But if you come down and you believe that you can make that shot at the buzzer to win the game, it's what every kid ever drills when they shoot in their backyard by themselves, balls clanging off the hoop, wherever it might be. Everybody drills that way that you can hit the game winner, and he did it the other night. So I believe that they have all the ingredients necessary to really emerge victorious in this championship for 2023. And here's the formula. You know, when I talk about a setback is nothing but a setup for a comeback, you have those in the course of the games. You can be up, you can be down, but from a coaching... Yeah, you're going to get all that, too? Yeah? I will wait for it. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll start all over again. You know, so during the course of a game, you're going to have swings. You know, it would be great if you could race to the lead and keep it for the entire duration. But hey, times you're going to be up, you're going to be down, they're going to catch up, that's all going to happen. But the formula in my mind has always been if there's a minute remaining for every point you're down, you have a chance. So as I was watching the game the other day at, at the home of Ken and Margie Blanchard with my wife, and my wife is just, she's just biting her nails and she's saying we don't have a chance to win and we're so far down, what's wrong, we can't make it. I always said, well listen, we're down by 13, there's 20 minutes left to go. There's plenty of time to do it. And then we're down by seven, and there's 10 minutes to go. There's plenty of time to go. Then you're down by one, and there's one minute to go. We can win this game. We will win this game. Watch and see. And guess what? It happened. They couldn't believe it when it did happen. Well, I believed it because I believe that we can win. I have, I have that belief that we have I blind faith in it. I mean, that's, that's what every player has. Everybody does. Every team that's ever played here at San Diego State has believed they can win a national championship when they tip off at the start of the season. This is the only team from this San Diego State that's gotten there. UConn has been to like 36 NCAA tournaments, four national championships, and they won all four. This is their fifth appearance. They've got some history there. You went to UNC, so you understand, or your husband did. I mean, he can brag all he wants about the history of North Carolina basketball. Well, we don't have that. We're building a reputation, not resting on one. And the reputation for basketball greatness begins tonight when San Diego State wins the national championship.